So let's plan for, I want to take off at 1940, which is going to be in the middle of the T-33 demo. Everybody seems to have to not have a problem with that, so I'm going to blast off and go meet up with him. Jack, honey, sweet. We're running exactly on time right now, that's so to the minute when they're supposed to take off. Uh, so take off at 1940, 40 minutes from right now. I'd like to go up the ladder 25 minutes from right now. Uh, will be the game plan for us, man. Altitude remain the same as yesterday, so 5540, on everything. Frequencies remain the same. Taxi plan out of here. It looks like looks like we're gonna be all right. So we'll pull straight out uh, in the obvious direction there. Now with Doc out of the way, I'm kind of curious where they recover Doc here in the next uh, few minutes. How that's gonna look? Uh, but ideally, I'd like to do what we were talking about. If they have Doc push back there, we're gonna come. Uh, da -da -da -da. Taxi out, taxi back. We got all that contention type stuff. We got all that. We're running on time right now. That's it. everybody welcome aboard I'm gonna take you uh, start to finish what's like flying the a10 demo so first we're gonna check all of our lights make sure everything's working there which they are my fire detect and bleed air system lights make sure those enunciators are working got the gear down three green all the handles are in g meters reset fuel looks good six plus or minus four three plus or minus three good there and i've already done before engine start checklist so here we go Signaling that we're going to start three, they come to attention. Give me the signal, APU to start, clock's running. The left fuel pressure light goes out, shows me my DC fuel pump is working. And we're looking for 100% RPM uh, on the APU. There we go, good RPM. Air comes back, APU generator goes to on. That's going to provide AC power to the entire airplane now. Before goes into effect in five minutes, so uh, uh, I don't know how long you power. need on your run up, but that's how long you got. Start aligning that thing. And set the power okay. real quick. Adjust the seat, adjust my pedals, all right, we're ready for engine start. I'm going to rehack the clock, give them the signal, or start one. Going to motor. So we'll see the APU load up now. We're going to motor the engine to 20% and make sure it's cool, so below 100 degrees. There's 20. Looks good. Throttle goes into idle. I see good fuel flow. Start the clock. You can hear it light. Engine operate switch back to norm. And first thing I see is my oil pressure light go out at 34 PSI. Yep, good oil pressure. Now I'm looking at uh, the RPM gauge as it climbs. Good hydraulics, approximately 47. Yep, I got good hydraulics there. Looking for the generator at 52. I got that. 56%. I got 10 seconds for the start cycle light to go out. So I hit 10 seconds at 28 elapsed. Looking for 38. Yep, there we go. That's a good start on one. 
reset my clock. They're going to give me the signal flight control is clear. I'm going to cycle the flight controls, make sure the left hydraulic system is powering all the flight controls, and get the signal started. We're going to repeat the process now. Go on the motor. APU is coming up. RPM's alive. There's 10. There's 20 and spinning. Throttle over the hump. I got good fuel flow. Start the clock. Good light. All right, looking for good oil pressure. Oil pressure looking good. Looking for hydraulics now. Hydraulics are good. Now we should see the generator kick on. At, uh, at 52 percent. All right, generator's on. 56 percent. Got 10 seconds. 37. Get start on two. All right, we're gonna check all of our lights. Yeah, look good. Turn off my left generator. Check the AC crossover. Make sure the right gen can power everything on the airplane. Check the inverter for essential AC power there. We're good. And on. Good left and right. And CDU is chugging along. Aligning our eggy. Here we go. All right. They give copy. me a signal. We're going to check our flaps. So I've only got three positions here. So up. And they're in takeoff now. Show me in takeoff. Going to put down. Air flaps are down. Coming back up. Speed brakes. Partial. Now we're going to open them up full. Now we're going to cycle them. He's giving me a signal. Flaps are closed. All right, flight controls. Elevator's down. Elevator coming up. Rolling left. Rolling right. Rudder left. Rudder right. Now we're going to check our SAS system, our stability augmentation system. Make sure it disengages appropriately. Kicking left. Kicking right. And check the speed brake for the pitch trim compensator. Yep, that looks good. And checking our trim. Elevator down. Elevator up. Rolling left. Rolling right. Rudder left, rudder right. All right, now we're going to check our emergency system. We have a backup trim system. So down, up, rolling left, rolling right. Back to norm, hit our takeoff trim, and I got trim in the green. And they're showing me neutral on the ground. So now we're going to check our brakes. So one of the crew chiefs is running under the airplane right now. He's going to see the calipers pumping. So I'm pumping on the right. Should give me the thumbs up. Now with the anti-skid on, good pump there. Now we're going to do the exact opposite. He's running over to the left side. I'm going to check, make sure the brakes are pumping with the a get engaged, which they are. Disengage it and still pumping. So we got to go Now we're going to check our slat system. So he's going to hit the AOA vein over there. And, yep, good slat, good tone. And I'm going to give him a chop check. Make sure our engines are appropriate, uh, idling uh, appropriately and check some operation limits on the motors. Good chop check on those. Now I'm going to bleed the O-Box system, so it's probably noisy uh, for just a second. We have an onboard oxygen check. Airbox 1 is 1, hey, copy. We're talking to land clear, I mean. Hog got to land clear, I mean. Thank you, Hog. Safety loud and clear, I mean. He's up on a tower on his radio. If he has anything to relay, he'll do it through me. Roger. All right, about to be at Also, he put a uh, yellow tarp. It should be dog balls for the 500 foot line and a red tarp for the 1,000 foot line. Excellent. All right, four minutes is a lap. Showing INS nav is ready, so I'm going to go to nav mode on that while they're completing their checks. I got the computers of the airplane still powering up right now, our main three uh, main three systems. So our IFC computer controls all the weapon symbology and basically everything I'm seeing in the HUD. We have the KICU, which is the central computer of the airplane, all the weapon systems and basically anything that's on uh, my two displays uh, that I've got in the jet. And then the jitter system, which is for our data link, which I don't obviously use for the demo. Uh, but go ahead and power it up anyway. All right, now I'm just running through some prompts as the uh, IPSI system runs through its built-in test. 
All right, got to let the APU cool down for two minutes after it's uh, after it's unloaded from start the engine. So we're past that time now. So I'm gonna let them know. Uh, Gotta let no shut down. Hog safety. We have the uh, airspace. We have everything good to go. Roger. All right. Completing all of our checks here. Now we're just waiting on the computers to boot up. Pull up. Pull up. Altitude. Altitude. All right. FC bits complete. We'll go ahead and tell them pull chocks. And they're going to hold me in position. I'm engaging the uh, nose wheel steering. We're going to do a rollover check right here in the chalk so they can check the tires, make sure there's no bald spots, no cords showing, no issues uh, that they foresee for the for the takeoff and landing. All right, he's giving me the signal. We're going to just roll forward a little bit. People are often surprised to hear the A-10 doesn't have a parking brake or anything, so anytime we're sitting here stopped on the ramp, you're just holding the brakes the whole time. Uh, it actually produces enough thrust to idle to idle, or to taxi uh, pretty fast. So you guys sit here and just hold the brakes uh, while they do all their checks, assume the trucks are full. All right. Everything's loaded off the DTC now. Safety, hard grade taxi. Clear the taxi. Uh, he wants you to take off runway four. Got taxi, do runway four. All right, we'll give the signal, sir. Start rolling. They're going to signal it back. Check our brakes one last time. Roll forward. Salute. And here we go. here runway four so got a little bit of a taxi all right as soon as the airboss uh, takes over the airspace and uh, they give it to us for the demonstration you're basically approved uh, anywhere in the airfield so we can go ahead and cross the closed runways now that we've taken the airspace uh, no issues getting out there so it's pretty quiet on the taxi out Right now is just kind of the last opportunity. I'll run through uh, run through my altitudes one more time, some of my parameters. Uh, since we're flying at a, a different altitude than home station where I practice, so running through those numbers again in my mind, so my cross check is efficient and uh, and it's it just comes second nature as I'm flying through the demo. I'm not worried about uh, any sort of altitude conversions or anything like that. My technique uh, is I roll the altimeter to the nearest thousand feet of the field, so I've always got even uh, an even number in the HUD and on my round dial altimeter. Uh, for any of the parameters that I'm checking. So roll it to the nearest thousand feet. Here at Tyler, we're about 500 feet uh, above sea level, so I just roll it on up to a thousand feet, and that's what I'll be uh, basing all my maneuvers off of. Now, Sam, so uh, we don't have a parking brake, and the A-10 idles pretty fast. Uh, the, you hear the joke all the time. The only thing that, only two things the A-10 does fast is taxi and uh, slow down. So if I just sit here with all, without my feet on the brakes and just let it go, uh, and not tap them to uh, kind of check the brakes every now and again. You'd probably get up to like 40, 50 knots on the ground. It actually wants to taxi in a hurry. All right, here we go. We're going to go ahead and get the canopy down and start running through our free takeoff checks. All right, canopy's closed and lock. Flaps to seven lights. My IFF or transponder. Pedo heat, APU is on. Uh, seat is armed. Skid. I'll get my anti skid once I pull up there. Safety hogs ready to go. Hogs, you're clear for takeoff runway four. Clear for takeoff runway four, thanks. I got pre takeoff checks complete. Safety. So I got flaps, lights, IFF. Seat and 
I'll get my uh, skid as soon as I'm in position. Clear out the Obox one more time. Alright, we're clear for takeoff, so we're going to do a static takeoff, meaning I'm going to come to a full stop once I line on the runway. Can I confirm you're using a thousand foot for your altitude? Thousand foot. Thank you. And the skit's on now. Safety hog out, lineup checks complete, altimeter set 1,000 feet, HSI is set, bugs are set, nap mode. Safety. Alright, there we go, everything's good. Run them up. Alright, we're going to bring the power all the way up, uh, about an inch from full power there, set 90% core RPM, we're going to check our engine performance, make sure they look good before we go. That all looks good, all of my lights are out. Rolling. Attack! Attack! Alright, here we go. Power's coming up to max. Airspeed's alive, nose hole steering goes out. There's 60, 70, 80, 90 knots, 100. 110, rotate, and we're off the ground, gear's coming up, level off at 20 feet, there. flaps are coming up, 170, 190, 200, 220, and here we go. Hog, off check. I've got uh, 3.7 on the gas balance, so winds calm. Safety. All right, we're going to take a quick rip around the pattern here, do a little site survey. Edge of the uh, runway, that's our right corner marker, and then the big runway intersection is the left corner marker. Super easy to see. Altitude, altitude. Good easy markers out here. And we'll start our climb. Alright, as I'm in the climb, the guys are going through some of the narration right now. It usually takes about uh, a little over three minutes as they do some of the narration. That gives me the opportunity to climb up, build some energy to get ready for the show. Uh, in the A-10, I pretty much fly the entire demo in max power, uh, with very few exceptions. Uh, so whatever energy I enter the show with right from the get-go, that's kind of what I'm stuck with for uh, for the majority of it. So it's important to climb up, get a lot of airspeed, uh, so I can get on, put on a good, safe, uh, and uh, exciting show. So what I do right now is I'm just looking over the rail, picking out my, uh, my corner markers there. I've got some uh, references for both the 500 and the 1,000-foot show line to keep us safe and away from the crowd. So I got good references on the ground for that, and this is my time to kind of survey that. Make sure, uh, make sure it looks on the ground as if it did in the in the pre-study, looking at the map. Safety hog, yeah, go, no issues. I can't see the tarps from the hold, but I was able to see them on the site survey there. Uh, no problem. Got the VOR there at uh, a thousand feet, and I got the shack and the weather station for 500 feet, and then the corner markers are uh, are easy. Yeah, you shacked the corner markers in the last one. All right, we're just going to keep on climbing up, kind of dance around these clouds a little bit. I'll be ready in about 30 seconds, just going to do a quick G-warm-up. There's no narration. No narration. Roger. Yeah, so just a quick G warm up. Make sure I'm feeling good. Jet's feeling good. Hey, grab. We're not good balance. 
helicopter. Off the middle combined area will be in a climb. Setting up the RN 17 indicator. Uh, Grant. All right, here we go, 45 degrees nose low. We're gonna get as much smash as we can. 450 knots or 0.75 Mach is the max for the airplane. So we're gonna try and get all the way to 450. There's 420, 430, there's 440, 448. Right here as we approach the corner marker. All right. Altitude, altitude. altitude. Still, uh, 300 feet. Wings level in, here we go. Five and a half Gs on the bottom. 90 degrees nose high. I'm going to pick my point out there, start the roll. There it is, 540 roll onto our back. Altitude right here, 69160. All right, into the split S. Way off my show line there, start the roll. Position here, going left to go right. And then setting up for the slow roll. Typically a little lighter G right here in the repositions just to get the energy back. Alright, I got taxiway echo and the VOR. Gotta make sure we get over these houses first and start the roll. Into the Cuban 8, about 4 Gs. That's good energy uh, sustaining uh, G right there for the A 10. 4 3, 175. Continue. Big push. Roll. Roll. Alright, here we go. Second leaf. 500 feet. 325 knots right where I want to be. About Work four. show left a little bit. are nice and calm, not pushing us around at all. Delta 2409 on guard, Delta 1023, you're right, there. Alright, setting up for the half for first Cuban. Pull up, anything. pull up. Same entry, 500 feet, there is 490, 335, looking good. Five, 55 degrees, nose high. Alright, there's 4,000 feet, start the roll, big push right here, all the way to the dash. 601, Continue. All right, now we're just going to get as much speed as we can, move it into the 500 foot show line for the level 360. Should be able to get a uh, lot of smash here, pretty tight turn right this. All right, there's 530 feet, 360 knots. Here we go. All right, 6.8. All right, see the board's coming out there. We're gonna set up for a gear down pass below 200. Here comes the gear, here comes the flaps. Five hundred foot show line. Gonna bring it down to 300 feet, about 120 knots. Altitude, altitude. Normally right here, this is where I, uh, I talk to the crowd. Speed break, speed break. 
just thank them for uh, for having us out, being great hosts for us. A lot of po folks think it's uh, pre-recorded, but it's Speed actually uh, brought to you from the jet. Give them a wave, show center. Speed break, speed break. Speed brakes go in. And I'll bet he'll stop yelling at me. That's the gear coming up. Gear's up. Flaps coming up. All right, now setting up for our pop guns attack. It's the the highest instantaneous G portion of the uh, of the demo. They are typically just get just over seven Gs. Uh, the jet's rated to seven point three three in the configuration that we fly it. So we try and take it all the way up to the limit. During the show, you'll hear him passing me the nine line, uh, which sounds almost identical to a nine line we'd hear in combat from a uh, JTAC or any ground party uh, requesting air support. And this is very similar to what you'd see for a low level ingress. Obviously, not as low as we'd go in combat. Just make sure we keep everybody safe. I won't continue. I won. Clear that. Pull up. Pull up. Altitude. Altitude. All right. So looking for no more than 285 on that maneuver. Altitude. Altitude. That's the maneuvering speed at the. Uh, the weight we're flying it. Push this next one out further uh, away from the crowd. Roger. Hogged in. Hog one, continue. Hog one, clear that. Pull up, pull up, altitude, altitude. Pull up, pull up. Altitude, altitude. All right, into the jig out. Big bird. Nose is coming up. Looking for 2,900 feet for the over the top. There's 25. I'm going to roll. Push. 30170. Continue. Gonna do a wave, big whipper deal here, try and gain some energy back. Thousand foot show line for the four point. Got some spots here. Thousand foot show line. All right, speeds look good. Altitude's good.
Alright, setting up for the dedication pass. Always one of the cooler parts of the demo right here. Especially when we're flying old 962 with that paint scheme. Altitude, altitude. Altitude, altitude. Oh, lots of birds. <laughs> All right, going to attack pitch. Altitude, as much altitude. As we can get. Does the boss want me to try and land two, uh, two, two or four? Land on two, two. Roger. Winds are calm. Roger. Alright, we'll circle back around. We'll come up with a cooler way to finish it off in for, uh, for tomorrow for sure. Kind of interesting where the show line's 90 degrees out from the uh, from the primary runway we're using. So the show's not really over the runway uh, that we're using for takeoff and landing. Alright, so here comes the speed brakes. About 40% speed brakes is what we're looking for. Oh, we configure for landing. That's just help keep the engine spooled up. Here comes the gear. Flaps all below 200. Clear to land, 2-2. Two, two. Captain, clear to land, 2-2. Two, two. Got inbound, three green flaps are full. Speed brake, speed brake. The way I'm flying, uh, the weight I'm at right now, about 135 on final, 150 around the final turn. I'm at 152 right now. 45 degrees, 10 degrees nose low should set us up pretty good from our base position. One last sanity check. Yep, gear's down, flaps are down. Altitude, altitude. All right, we'll bring it to on speed. Good anyway. Right. Three degree wire. On the speed, we're at 138. Looking for 135. Over the fence at 135. Alright, nozzle steering. Go through the same checks there, so flaps, lights, IFS. Taxi down to the end of 1 8 and then turn on to 1 3. Down to 1 8, then uh, right turn on 1 3. Flaps, lights, IFF, pedo heat. Use, use caution for the X at the numbers on row 1 3. Tally. items are stowed here. And looks good. There we go, get a little breeze going.
I'll tell you what, if you're in a jet that allows you to taxi around with a canopy up. Taxi down 1-3 and then left on Fox. Down 1-3, left Fox. If you're in a jet that allows you to taxi with a canopy up and you close the canopy while you're taxiing around, you're wrong. Oh, he's got to show some love to the air boss and everybody at show center. They're the ones getting all the work done this weekend. And then, of course, the, the dudes take care of the airplane. Can't thank them enough. They're the ones that keep these old airplanes safe to fly and performing like they do. And they're really, really, really good at it. Got some sweet warbirds over here off the right. All right, so as we come back in here to chocks, I'm going to open the flaps and speed brakes. Allow the maintenance crew on their walk around to be able to get in there. And uh, see all the mounting points and pivoting points and some spots where there's some safety wire. there. Alright, now we just keep our hands off the throttle and the stick away from the controls, uh, especially while the guys are under the airplane or, or anywhere near the flight controls. Uh, you certainly don't want to get anybody hurt bumping into anything, so uh, always important to keep your hands away from all that stuff while they're under the jet. There you go, signal to roll forward. And come to a stop. So this is our final parking spot. Now they're going to check the the uh, downsides of the tires, that's why I do the rollover, so they, they don't miss any bald spots or any cord showing, gouges in the tire, or anything like that. So they made sure to check all the surfaces of it. Alright, now it's safe to start shutting down some stuff. Basically all the electrical systems, all the computer systems in the airplane, get all those shut off. Get the jet set up just how I like it for the next sortie. As soon as uh, Spencer, yep, gave me the indication now, the chocks are in, I'll come off the brakes. I like to just check over the shoulders before I come off the brakes, make sure nobody's right in front of the tires or anything. So yeah, now I've got it, basically everything powered off. The MFCDs, the KICU, the jitters, the FC. I've got the Eggy powered down. TACAN, ILS is all powered off. Uh, my CMS is powered off. The uh, IFF is powered off. Uh, CMS I never even turn on for this stuff, but it just verify all the stuff got uh, gets left, or it gets turned off uh, before we shut down. I got a cage to stand by. Fuel gauge is set. Yep, everything else is good. So now we're just waiting on the signal for them once they're ready. First thing they're going to tell me to do is close the flaps, close the speed brakes. Uh, and as soon as that's complete, then we'll shut down the left engine. Once we get a good shutdown on the left, uh, which is uh, I get signaled by the crew chief once it shuts down. Uh, what they do is they're back there under that engine nacelle. You might be able to see it in one of the cameras. They're under the engine nacelle and they got a water bottle. It looks like an algae bottle on a big stick. Uh, and all the fuel that's still in the system there uh, is just going to leak out, you know, a couple, I don't know less than a pint of fuel uh, into uh, into that little algae bottle that they catch. And that signals that hey, we got good uh, a good shutdown there. Uh, once we do that, uh, I'll cycle the flight controls, make sure the right system uh, is powering the flight controls appropriately, uh, and I don't feel anything uh, weird in the stick, and do a, to do a last cycle on the hydraulic system there, and then we'll shut down number two. So there comes the signal, close up flaps and speed brakes. And then he gives me one clear to shut down. So we'll bring it back to off. Uh, 
and I just wash it for him for good fuel flow. I get a bunch of master cautions, obviously, as the engine shuts down, so I'll smack those off. Got the thumbs up, flight controls are clear, here we go. Good cycle. And two's clear to shut down. So we're just gonna watch the gauges, make sure everything rolls back, and then I'm just looking for him. And as soon as that happens, the uh, battery and inverter go to off. Radios go to off. And we gonna climb out. Thanks for a lot. Thanks for uh, coming along for a ride. My name is Aaron Mikesell. I uh, enlisted in the military in uh, 1990 um, during the first Gulf War, where I stayed uh, part of the 3rd Ranger Battalion uh, for the next 20 years. So when I came home, I had a really bad transition, just shutting out and not being with my family. It was easier to just stay barricaded in our closet at home. I was at Bass Pro Shop and in walked a puppy raiser. So my wife got their business card and realized she's a puppy raiser for Patriot Paws Service Dogs in our backyard right here in Rockwall, Texas. And so I went on the waiting list. It took about two years to have a dog fully trained for me. I went from taking anywhere near 15 to 20 meds a day. I'm now on zero medication. I didn't go to my kids' football games or get out and be a parent until I had Chief. And now I don't miss a single thing with my kids. So please help us continue this important work for veterans. And don't forget about Patriot Paws Service Dogs on North Texas Giving Day.